My name is Steve Crispino. I'm the uh, president of the Port Commission this year. Um, it took a while, but we are finally here. So we would like to thank all of our friends and neighbors for, for attending. Uh, in 2011, Terrebonne Port Commission replied to a solicitation by the Government Services Agency, GSA, for a waterfront facility. The Department of Homeland Security needed a waterfront facility for U.S. Customs Marine Group. Terrebonne Port proposed this facility and GSA accepted it. However, at the time, we didn't own the building. Very bold, David. At the recommendation of Ken Watkins, we hired a New Orleans-based attorney who guided us through the process to purchase the property out of bankruptcy court. Um, at the time of the purchase, the property was really in deplorable condition. It ended up costing the port a little over $100,000 just to clean the property and the building. Sold off some of the equipment and the proceeds ended up paying for that cleanup. The port hired Providence GSE and their architect, John Lyons, to design the 8,200 square foot U.S. Customs facility located in the building's warehouse space. Uh, the facility was constructed by Byron Talbot Construction Company. After completion of the U.S. Customs facility, uh, they needed a marina and a boat launch for their operations. The port enter entered into a separate lease with U.S. Customs and hired Providence GSC's engineers Brian Bro and Phil Shakesnyder to design a marina and boat launch that was constructed by Lowland Construction Company. Next, Immigration and Customs Enforcement more commonly referred to as ICE, needed a facility, so GSA requested proposals. Terrebonne Port proposed building a, the 4,000 square foot facility next to U.S. Customs in the building's warehouse. GSA accepted the port and entered into a lease for the ICE facility. Architect John Lyons with Providence GSE designed the facility and Byrick Talbot Construction Company performed that construction. With the three leases in place, the port focused on the old office space located in the front section of the building. Up to this point, Terrebonne Port did not own an office building to operate out of, and this space was ideal to build our new port office. The facility was done, uh, designed by local architect Kyle Domain and managed by Grant Wagaspack, both with the Planus Design Group, and it was constructed by Onshore Construction Company. Now, we are here and ready to enjoy the fruits of all of this hard work. The port is very proud of its facility, and I want to per personally thank everyone who was involved through this entire process. Without the help of these people, this never would have happened. Our state delegation, of course, Senator Norby Chabert and Brett Allen, Representative Tanner McGee, Zee Zarang, and Beryl Amadi. Our parish government, President Gordy Dove, and the entire parish council. Facility planning, Mark Moldes and Lyle Savant. From Providence, GSE, Phil Shexnod, Clay Bro, John Lyons, Brian Bro, Art DeFrady, and of course Sean. BT Construction, Byron Talbot, and Curtis Marcello. Lowland Construction Company, Eugene Robichaud, Pompey Robichaud, and Sterlin Boudreaux. From the DePlanis Design Group, David DePlanis, Kyle Domang, and Grant Wagenspach. From Onshore Construction, Michael Rahm and Joe Gia. From the U.S. Customs Department, Ed Serrano and Robert Terrio. From the ICE Group, Blaine Bajeron and John Schmidt. From Coastal Commerce Burke Bank, Mark Falls, Sharon Bajeron and John Rogers. Watkins, Walker and E. Roche, Mr. Ken Watkins. And of course the government consultants, John Holt and Sean Toops. And then Mr. James Pipero. From GSA, Mr. Jim Plock. And Kyle Doman did an awesome job. God, thank you, buddy. And so did John Lyons. This all started back in 1964 with state legislation creating the Terrebonne Port Commission. After the port's creation, the Terrebonne Parish government created the position of port director and appointed a board. One of the early port directors just happens to be in our audience today, Mr. Pudgy Prejean. I want to thank Pudgy for all the work he did. He paved the road for me to get up here and, and do what we're doing now. So thank you, Pudgy. I appreciate it. Um, during the 90s, uh, President Barry Bonaland, I, I don't think Barry, see, I didn't see him, but uh, I wanted to recognize him for some of the work he did. 
He recognized that ports were economic generators. Under Mr. Bowman's leadership, he convinced the parish council to match a capital outlay grant to develop the 400-acre tract of land that, that Pudgy purchased for us on Industrial Boulevard. So without his leadership, we may not be here today either. So I wanted to thank Barry. I wish he came. The, uh, the parish and state each contributed $3.5 million to the ports developer, and, and in late 2004, only 40 years after the port's creation, the port was open for business. The first tenant was Thomas C. Marine Construction, and they were signed in 2005, and we never looked back. So fast forward to 2011. The port had 12 active leases. We had completed the construction of two dry docks that were leased to Thomas C. We had just completed the last ship facility bulkhead and dredging. We had a 400 foot dry dock under construction that would be leased to La ship. We had a new concrete road in the design process to access the 400 acres on Industrial Boulevard. And it's all at the same time GSA was requesting proposals for a new facility to house U.S. customers. What a great position to be in. By March of 2012, the Terrebonne Port Commission purchased this building and signed the lease with GSA to construct the customs facility. None of this could have happened or been accomplished without the assist assistance of our state delegation. Uh, Senator Norby Chabert, Senator Brett Allen, along with Representative Gordy Dove, at that time recognized the advantages of lo locating U.S. Customs and ICE in the heart of Terrebonne's industrial sector. They rolled up their sleeves and dove right in. With financial assistance from the State Capital Outlay Program and revenue generated from leases, Terrebonne Port Commission was able to purchase this facility and build out this beautiful complex. Uh, the, the Terrebonne Port Commission uh, contributed 65% of the money and the state contrib contributed 35% for this entire facility. And I want to thank the state for that. Uh, Providence GSE's architect John Lyons designed the facilities for Customs and Ice and Brian Burke designed the Marine. They both did a great job. Thank you, John. I want to take the time to thank two of the best senators in the state legislature, Norby Chabert and Brett Allen, as well as the best representatives, Stanley McGee, Jerome Zerang, and Beryl Lamadi. Without y'all support, we would not be standing here today, and without your continued support, we won't be able to complete this facility. I would also like to recognize and thank uh, someone who we refer to as the godfather of the Terrible Port Commission, Mr. Ken Watkins. Ken was the legal counsel for this port for I don't know how many years, probably since 1964, and um, did a great job. Uh, he and I partnered on a lot of stuff, and, and we got a lot of stuff done. So Ken, I appreciate all the work he did. Of course, I, I have to thank my board of commissioners. These seven individuals who volunteer their time selflessly to oversee and guide me and my staff with all these projects. They bring a lot to the table very, uh, with a very broad resume of experience. I'd like each one of y'all to stand up when I call your name. Steve Crispino, current president. Greg Landry, current vice president. Chris Ernie, current secretary treasurer. Eddie Rome, and he's not here today. Immediate past president, Dan Davis. Andrew Blanchard. And Charles Giglio. Charles couldn't make it either. Uh, let's give these guys a round of applause. of how we're going to make this maritime infrastructure that we have, that we've been, in many cases, steered by good leadership in the past, and at the end of the day, just best blessed by the grace of God to, uh, to, to be where we are. That we'll be able to change as the global economy changes, as the U.S. economy changes, and certainly as the local economy changes. So I'm happy to be here, happy to have done my part in bringing back important tax dollars to our, to our uh, local uh, area from our state, and I look forward to working with them uh, in this political life or the next. Uh, thank y'all for all being here. It shows your commitment to our We appreciate it. Bye. Oh.